Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 21 Part 3. In this part of the build log, I'm mostly going to focus on the water cooling system. I now have the rest of the components, the Black Ice Nemesis GTS 360s, the Bits Power 200mm Reservoir Tube, more Noise Blocker Black Solent Pro PL2s, some Mayhem's X1 UB Green Cool and Concentrate, two Samsung 850 Evo 1TB SSDs, which are going to be installed along with the Samsung 950 Pro 512GB M.2, and the Seagate 4TB SSHD. So there's a lot of high-end storage going into this build. Part of the evolution of water cooling, something that we've seen with radiators over the years, when I first started water cooling, I was using 2000 RPM fans, which was considered kind of medium. I mean, I was seeing people using far higher RPM fans, incredibly loud configurations, because the priority back then was purely performance. But it wasn't long before I started using lower RPM fans, because a big reason to water cool, certainly now, is to have a more quiet configuration. And I realized that if you build properly, you could have both silence and performance. And we've seen radiators become more and more optimized for lower RPM fans. And a perfect example of this is the Black Ice GTS, because the previous GTS had a 30 FPI split fin array, which is incredibly dense. You can hardly see through it. Definitely designed for high RPM fans. But the new Nemesis GTS, which I have here, has a 16 FPI and a split fin array, which is still more dense than a lot of the other radiators out there. But I think that they've found a perfect balance with this configuration for, you know, a 1200 RPM fan, which is what I like to use now. Nothing more than 1200 because it just becomes too loud and it's not really necessary unless you have nowhere near enough radiator capacity. If you tend to every little detail, each thing may not be much, but overall it makes a massive difference. I've always changed out all of the stock bolts, nuts and washers that I possibly can. You're looking at the stock bolts that come with Black Ice radiators, and Black Ice has some of the best stock radiator bolts out there, certainly compared to some of the other radiators. But I'm going to be changing out all of these, and this is my collection of bolts, nuts and washers, something that I cannot build a system without, because I can't bring myself to use some of the stock bolts, nuts and washers that come with some of these components. So these are the bolts that I'm changing to. They're a beautiful black button head Allen key bolt in a clean top without any printing. And this is something that I'm doing on the Singularity Computers store. I'm stocking things that I've been using for years that I use in my own builds, things that I really want. And I've been trying to source the bolts that I want for a long time. And I've kind of found them here and there over the years, you know, ran out. But finally, I've gone and made a whole lot of custom bolts, custom lengths, custom heads without printing, you know, exactly the ones that I want in M4, M3 and 632, which cover every radiator, every possible component and kit configuration in a build. And this is also what I do with my designs. You know, it's an idea I've come up with over the years to improve my builds, something that I really want personally, something that I'd, I would love to use in my own builds. And this is why I always change out my bolts, because first of all, I want to use bolts that look good. I want to use bolts that suit a build. So if it's an industrial looking build, I'll use stainless steel socket at Allen key bolts. If it's a clean understated build like this one, I'll use black button at Allen key bolts. Also, a lot of components don't come with all of the bolts that you need for all of the different possible configurations, mostly radiators. They may come with the bolts to mount the radiator to the case, but what about the fans to the radiator or the fans between the radiator and the case? And I mean, if you have two radiator bolts missing from your box, try to source some more. They're very hard to find. So, you know, we have a collection now of bolts, nuts and washers that you're certainly not going to find anywhere else. And for aesthetics and also for practical reasons, an important addition to every build. I've installed the front radiator and fans and the pump and reservoir configuration with the Singularity Computer's Ethereal Single Silver Reservoir Mounts. And you can see how the Ethereal Mounts have brought more silver to the front of the build and balanced out the color scheme just as I intended. I'm also going to remove the sticker from the top of the SSHD to bring even more silver to the front of the build. And everything 
has worked perfectly. It looks balanced, it all fits nicely, except the length of the pump and res config. It is going to end up too long. I am going to test it to confirm, but there's not going to be enough room for the fittings at the top of the res once I install the top radiator and fans, which is why I have the 200 millimeter res tube. And if you have a bits power pump and res config and you want to change the size of the res tube, you can pick them up separately in a whole range of different sizes. And I think 200 millimeter is going to look a lot better in this build because 250, I mean, this reservoir is on the big side for this build. If I really wanted to cram this in, I could remove the SSHD and move the top mount down to the next level and push the pump and res config all the way down to the bottom panel of the case, but it wouldn't be centered, it would look cramped, and I need to have the SSHD installed. So I'm probably going to drop that res tube down in size. You can see how it's right up against the SSHD. Now let's talk about radiator thickness. It's a very important topic and I've had a lot of questions about it because this case is a popular case. Now this radiator is 30 millimeters thick and with the hard drive installed, I couldn't install it in a push configuration with the fans because the fittings were touching the hard drive and there wasn't enough space. And that's because the fittings are down below the level of the hard drive. So, I mean, without the hard drive, this wouldn't be a problem, but with the hard drive installed, you need to install your front radiator in a pull configuration. Because, I mean, 30 millimeters, you don't get much thinner than that. And you can see now that I've done that, I have a good 15 millimeter gap between the fittings and the hard drive. So I could install a 40 or even a 45 millimeter thick radiator. But then there are other things to consider, such as the top radiator you are going to install. And the main restriction is where the two radiators meet in the corner. But we'll take a look at that shortly. You also need to consider if you are going to install a pump and res config onto the front of the radiator, the gap between the pump and res config and the power supply shroud. And you can see where I've installed the pump and res config, there is a good 15 millimeter gap. But if I were to move it up and down, that would change. And once I install the shorter res tube, I am going to be moving it up and then there'll only be about a four millimeter gap. So I can't really go any thicker with the radiator. And there's also the graphics cards to consider. Now, just looking at the routing for the PCIe cables, there is a hole in the power supply shroud for them, which is awesome. I love vertically routing my PCIe cables. I'm preparing the top radiator and fans for installation, and I still need to modify these fans. So the mod that I'm doing, as I mentioned in the previous video, it's a very common mod, and the reason I'm doing it is because of the only little niggle problem that I have with Noise Blocker Black Silent Pro, which is the exposed wires. So that's the reason I'm doing this mod, is to cover them up. And I just thought I'd briefly take you through this mod, even though it is basic, it's something that a lot of people will probably want to do. So what you're going to need, the tools and materials, some sharp scissors, side cutters, a burner, a fan connector remover, you're going to need some sleeving and heat shrink, and I always use MDPCX, which you can find on the Singularity Computers store, all of the MDPCX products. So small sleeving, small heat shrink, and also some SATA heat shrink you're going to need. You're also going to need some vinyl, which you can also find on the Singularity Computers store in matte black, carbon fiber, different patterns, white carbon fiber, brushed aluminium. So the first step is to remove the small clip which holds the wires in position. Now you need to be very careful, try not to lever anything because the fan frame is surprisingly weak and brittle, it will break very easily. And you also need to be careful not to damage the wires. With the side cutters you then need to cut the little channel a little bit bigger. I mean you can easily get the wires out but once the cable is sleeved you're not going to be able to get it back in. So don't cut it too wide because you actually need that channel to hold the cable in there afterwards and it holds it perfectly if you get it right. So then you just need to measure up some sleeving, sleeve it. Obviously at this point the sticker will also need to be removed and be careful when you're heating the heat shrink on the motor side. You don't want to heat it too much where you start, you know, damaging the, the PCB and melting the, the solder but it would take a lot to do that. And once it's sleeved, put the connector back on and push the cable back through the little channel. And if that channel is still small enough, it will hold it in position there and you won't need any cable ties. But 
I find with 120 millimeter, you don't need cable ties, but with 140 millimeter fans, you will. Now, cutting out the vinyl in a perfect circle is actually very difficult. So use the sticker to trace it out. Stick the sticker on the back of the vinyl and cut it out. And then when you remove the back of the vinyl, obviously the sticker comes off as well and that's it. So you get a perfect circle. The fan mods are complete. You're obviously not going to get to enjoy them in a push configuration, but at least the cables coming out of the sides of the fans are sleeved. I've completed the cable management for the radiator fans, which is something I always do outside of the build. Obviously, you should always do as much of your cabling as you can outside of your build. It's going to be a lot easier and you're going to get a better result. 30 millimeter thick radiators are perfect for this case if you're going to install two 360 millimeter radiators. The Black Ice GTS looks great. It's a perfect fit. We have a 10 millimeter gap between the top fans and the top of the motherboard. We also have a 10 millimeter gap up in the top right hand corner here between the fans. So that means that, well, theoretically you could go up to 35 millimeters, but you know, anything more than this and it's going to start looking cramped. It's just such a perfect fit. It looks really balanced. Another option, if you weren't going to install the SSHD or the pump and res config would be to install a thicker 360 millimeter radiator at the front. I mean, looking at the gap that you have between the front panel and the power supply shroud and the graphics cards, you could go all the way up to 80 millimeters and have push pull. I mean, there's a lot of room there, but then you'd have to drop down the top radiator to a 240 or a 280. And it's just not going to look as balanced as a config like this. So I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. I've completed the side panel window mod and I did this in a separate video, SC modding episode seven, side panel window mod. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. I go into detail on how to modify a side panel window, which looks like a simple mod, but it's really not. There's a lot involved. If you do it properly, you need to repaint the side panel. It is very time consuming. So the case mods are now complete for this build. You can see what I've done to the side panel. I've expanded the windows so that we can now see all of the internal components. Most importantly, the pump and reservoir configuration, which we couldn't see before. And it's a major feature of this build. And I've also changed the acrylic from smoked to clear. Now I used a full black paint on the side panel and the case is anthracite. It's not a full black, so it doesn't actually match, but it does match a lot of the internal components. So I think it works really well. It's time to install the Samsung 850 Evo 1TB SSDs. It turns out the fact that I had to install the graphics cards into the top two slots actually works well because it shows off the SSDs a little bit more. And this is a great aspect of the design of this case, having the SSDs on top of the power supply shroud here. So I'm testing to see if a fitting actually fits on top of the res and there's no way it does. I'd need an extra 15 to 20 millimeters for this to actually work without it looking cramped. So I've swapped to the 200 millimeter reservoir tube and it definitely doesn't look as clean and elegant. And that's because the res mount is halfway down the res tube. Having the res tube completely exposed without anything in the way does look cleaner, but it's a small sacrifice to make and it had to be done. And it definitely looks a lot more balanced. We have a nice gap at the top and bottom. It's more functional. It's going to be easier to tube up. So it's a big improvement overall. I've removed the sticker from the top of the SSHD and I'm also going to remove the small sticker from the back. And that's definitely another big improvement, having a bit more silver at the front of the build. That sums up this video. In the next part of the build log, I'm going to build the water cooling loop and fill it and bring the system close to completion. Remember, if you enjoy what we do, none of this would be possible without our patrons. Thanks for watching.